and meditations page 5 date november 26 1912 what a hymn of thanksgiving should i not be raising at each moment unto thee everywhere and in everything around me thou revealest thyself and in me thy will and consciousness express themselves always more and more clearly even to the point of having almost entirely lost the cross illusion of me and mine in a few shadows a few flaws can be seen in the great light which manifest thee how shall they bear for long the marvelous brightness of thy resplendent love this morning the consciousness that i had of the way thou art fashioning the spin which was i can be roughly represented by a great diamond cut with regular geometrical facets a diamond in its cohesion firmness pure limpidity transparency but a brilliant and radiant flame in its intense ever progressive light but it was something more something better than all that for nearly all sensation inner and outer was exceeded and that image only presented itself to my mind as i returned to conscious contact with the outer world it is thou that makes the experience fertile thou who rendest life progressive thou who compellest the darkness to vanish in an instant before the light thou who givest to love all its power thou who everywhere raises up matter in this ardent and wonderful aspiration in this sublime thirst for eternity thou everywhere and always nothing but thou in the essence and in the manifestation o shadow and illusion this all o suffering fade and disappear lord supreme art thou not there
November 28, 1912 The outer life, the activity of each day and each instant, is it not the indispensable complement of our hours of meditation and contemplation? And is not the proportion of time given to each the exact image of the proportion which exists between the amount of effort to be made for the preparation and realization. For meditation, contemplation, union is the result obtained, the flower that blooms, the daily activity is the anvil on which all the elements must pass and repass in order to be purified, refined and made supple and ripe for the illumination which contemplation gives to them. All these elements must be thus passed one after the other through the crucible before outer activity becomes needless for the integral development. Then is this activity turned into the means to manifest thee so as to awaken the other centers of consciousness to the same dual work of the forge and the illumination. Therefore, our pride and satisfaction with oneself, the worst of all obstacles, very modestly, we must take advantage of all the minute opportunities offered to need and purify some of the innumerable elements to make them supple, to make them impersonal, to teach them forgetfulness of self and abnegation and devotion and kindness and gentleness. And when all these modes of being have become habitual to them, then they are ready to participate in the contemplation and to identify themselves with thee in the Supreme Consciousness. That is why it seems to me that the work must be long and slow even for the best and that strikic conversions cannot be integral. They change the orientation of the being. They put it definitively on the straight path but truly to attain the goal none can escape the need of innumerable experiences of every kind and every instant O oh, supreme master who shinest in my being and each thing let thy light be manifest and the reign of thy peace come for all. December 2nd, 1912 So long as one element of the being, one moment of the thought is still subjected to outside influences, not solely under thine, it cannot be said that the true union is realized. There is still the horrible mixture without order and light for that element, that moment is a world, a world of disorder and darkness, as is the entire earth in the material world, as is the material world in the entire universe. <laughs>